Hello, my name is Kevin L. Jackson of Digital Transformers and author of Click to Transform. As we see more communication service providers going online with 5G, we also hear about 5G's potential and what it can deliver to both industry and society. Today, we'll be learning about how this new technology is transforming the entire telco industry with Monica Zelson, Head of Solution Area Packet Core at Ericsson. Welcome, Monica. Thank you, Kevin. Great to be here. No, we're so pleased. So, so Monica, you have recently taken on a very important role at Ericsson, heading up the 5G core network development teams, both the R&D and the commercial strategies. Since the core network performs many of the fundamental operations in a mobile network, this seems to foreshadow an expansion in core capabilities and functions. I'm sure communication service providers will see these capabilities as key to their future success. What do people really need to know with regards to the 5G core? Well, Kevin, it's a great question. I think to, to answer, I would probably start by looking at, you know, what do you actually want to get out of the 5G core network? Mm -hmm. And I think for most people, they would think about speed as the number one thing, you know, higher speeds with 5G. But in addition, you know, there's all of this, we talk about the industrial use cases where you would have, you know, the ultra low latency, for example, for robotics, you need to have, you know, clearly the highest possible security. Right? You might want to have your own dedicated network for, for specific enterprises. So all of these expectations, you know, puts really high demands on the core network because it's in the core network where you do a lot of, you know, the, the key functionality like authentic authenticating the, the end user and the device. Mm -hmm. uh, you would also look at, you know, making sure you get access to the right service that you have, you know, the, the right capability basically in scaling up and scaling down your capacity. Uh, so I think there's there's a lot of things that happens in the core network and the 5G core network is designed to handle all of you know, these uh, demands and it was de developed as a new architecture uh, called you know, the service based architecture leveraging on principles from IT and also cloud native technology. So right now in order to get the full power of your 5G network all the communication service providers. Uh, you know, need to now deploy and adopt this uh, 5G core network into their networks. And this is a pretty significant undertaking and quite a change, I think, from how networks have traditionally been built in the telecom world. Yeah, especially that service exposure and the um, network slicing. Mm -hmm. But with all the 80 live 5G networks deployed and 130 sound contracts, Ericsson certainly seems to know a lot about the core network. Can you please explain the journey that these operators will experience in this transition? Yeah, it's true. We we do have, you know, the 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 I would say the largest experience right now in the industry of of the 5G core, 5G networks in in general and 5G core as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, there there of course a lot of things that a service provider would need to consider when, you know, embarking on the 5G journey. Maybe one way to describe it is if I take two different dimensions, the vertical dimension and the horizontal dimension. So since this is being developed as you know from Ericsson 5G core, it's a fully cloud native core, which means you know you now have container uh, network functions. Uh, the mm -hmm. first question a lot of uh, service provider will ask, what is going to be the infrastructure that I will run these new network functions on? And some will actually take what we have, you know, the cloud native containerized uh, functions and still deploy it within virtual machines, more or less leveraging the infrastructure that they already have for 4G, because, you know, they might have capacity, they have the competence, it's an easier way to introduce, you know, the, the new technology. Uh, but we have others who now really want to go take full advantage of the fact that it is cloud native and want to do the deployment on a bare metal type of infrastructure. So we see both. Uh, options in the market and and from Ericsson we do support both and mm -hmm. and then if I talk more about the horizontal dimension I mean here you have both the end-to-end -end perspective from you know what you need to think of from you know from the device the radio access the core uh, you know the whole orchestration the BSS so in that whole domain there's also a lot of you know thinking around what's the right basically path for the introduction of 5G but 
maybe even more so, I would say it's also the interworking with 4G or 3G for that matter as well, right? Because very few, well, I would say no carrier would have a full NR coverage day one. So you would rely on that your end users will move between the different radio accesses. So what we're doing then in the core network, there's a lot of functionality that's needed here in order to make sure that you have a good and seamless handover of your service as you transition between the different coverage areas. So for example, if it's a voice call or video, you know, whatever the service might be, there should be no interruption to you as an end user when you're using the service. So these are also, I would say, elements that are, are part of really careful planning when you introduce 5G as well, how to actually make the end user service be the one that they, they would expect. Wow, you really set that up well, this um, complex view with those two axes. Um, what people, what should people consider before embarking on this journey? What are the real new business opportunities that you can see on the horizon? Yeah, I think, you know, if we talk about, you know, the horizon, you know, here and now it's a lot about getting these fundamentals in, in place. Mm -hmm. But the other one, you know, I, I like to think of it as a bit as industrialized matchmaking. Right? Because you, you do have, you know, you have an enterprise uh, who has a certain need and you have the service provider who has now this fantastic capability in the core network. But you need to find, you know, how do you actually get the tie between the enterprise to leverage this capability? So I would say we see a lot of examples now, you know, of these in different actors in the ecosystem coming together. Uh, I, I can take the example, you know, there, there's a, like a construction company. Uh, mm -hmm which might be leaning on another company to do uh, field maintenance that has mm -hmm. software you know on field maintenance on some of their equipment that the construction company needs right, right. And th in this field maintenance uh, you know the software for this of course if they could run this very close to the construction site uh, they could really you know leverage the benefit of having a low latency and a high capacity so for example with an ar type of application so here you would have like the enterprise who could benefit now from an enhanced use case from the developer of the software specific to the field maintenance. And then you have the service provider providing the connect connectivity at the bottom. But I think the next horizon is, is how do you go from these being one offs with these three parties, but more or less, you know, create more of a marketplace, both with the right business model as well as the technology you know, to support all of these coming together. And here, you know, like you mentioned, the, the things like uh, network exposure mm -hmm. is a key fundamental that we need to have in the network, but then also how to, you know, really elevate this, as I said, in the, to an industrialized way of matchmaking. I think that's the next horizon right, from my perspective in 5G. Well, it sounds like the uh, communication service providers really have to know the business models of their customers. but. On another area, I also understand that Ericsson is continuously investing uh, in uh, enhancing their portfolio. Most recently, the Ericsson Packet Core Firewall and the 5G Core Policy Studio. What do your customers see as your portfolio strengths? I would say uh, probably as the number one would still be this, the, the fundamentals of that, you know, it is cloud native and it's agnostic to the underlying infrastructure. Right. I think this gives the confidence in that it's future proof and it's also flexible enough, right? Mm -hmm. Then I would say, um, secondly, the fact that we have this end to end portfolio. So, you know, which also makes it possible for us, you know, already in our development, we can do pretty, you know, um, significant, I would say, testing in terms right. of these more advanced features that I talked about, you know, how do you actually get these to work end to end? How can you try uh, robustness and resilience type of features in the on, on a network level? I think this is highly appreciated. Uh, thirdly, I would say, you know, the fundamental for the Ericsson offering in, in 5G core is our dual mode 5G core. And this is, is called dual mode because you can actually support, you know, the, the legacy accesses like 4G, 3G, and 5G out of the same deployment. And I think this is appreciated as you know, giving a very flexible approach to how to introduce 5G into your network. And then maybe lastly, I think that, you know, I think the examples you gave are, you know, great uh, to also see we're, we're constantly looking to how to improve further, right? How can you enhance, you know, the offering? 
And I think you mentioned, you know, the Packet Core Firewall, which is yeah. all about, you know, increasing the security in the network. And the 5G Core Policy Studio, which is all about simplifying how you manage uh, all the policies that you would need to set in the network in order to really, you know, get the full service end to end. So I would say those were probably maybe the four things that I would highlight. Wow, with such a broad portfolio, you really are setting the trend in, in the industry. So if you're leading the industry, where's the industry going and, and what new features and developments can we expect to see in the 5G core? I think we, was, we should expect to see a lot, right? Uh, mm -hmm. However, I would say this year, I think we'll be a lot of seeing the launch of the 5G standalone networks. You might have recently uh, heard and seen the, the announcement from Vodafone Germany now mm -hmm. launching Europe's largest standalone network. And we're very proud to be part of that. Uh, and you should expect to see more of, of those type of announcements and more networks going live you know, throughout the year. So I'd personally be very excited to see you know, what will be the pickup of traffic into these networks? What kind of use cases will we see that you know, the, uh, the market you know, embraces and, and, uh, uh, and carry and take up on? But then, of course, now when again, then when that fundamental kind of of the 5G core network is there, it becomes all about these new type of opportunities where I think we should see more deployment of where network slicing becomes more commonplace. The network exposure will, you know, play a bigger part. Dynamic orchestration in order to manage all of this. So I think there's a there's a lot, you know, left to come in the whole area of 5G. But all of this, you know, trying to look at functionality that in the end can really you know, give the greatest value for the enterprise and the consumers that's gonna you know, use the network. Wow, I can see some really um, awesome use cases in manufacturing and transportation with that. But uh, you know, I'm afraid we're gonna have to wrap up with that, Monica. So thank you for giving us that insight into the 5G core and Ericsson's impressive telecommunications infrastructure portfolio. So thank you all for spending the time with us. See you next time on Intelligent World.